Hello! In this video, we are going to discuss the Zeiss notation and the Euclidean group. Specifically, we are going to show that the Euclidean group actually is a group by verifying the four postulates that we need to demonstrate to prove that a group actually is a group. The Euclidean group is the set of all transformations that take the point x to the point x prime by first taking x and multiplying it by r, which is a 3 by 3 non-singular matrix, and then adding to it a vector v from v3. An important property of the Euclidean group is that each transformation maintains distances between two points. We can think of each of these transformations as a rotation by R and then a shift by V. We can condense this transformation, the information in it, in the so-called Zeiss notation, where we have curly braces, we have the rotation R, we have a vertical line followed by the shift vector V. We have an identity transformation. So if we take our vector x and we multiply it by the identity, that still gives us x. And then we add to it the null or zero vector. And this transforms into x prime, which is exactly the same as x was. So that means that this is the identity transformation. In Zeiss notation, we can condense the identity to curly braces, I for the identity matrix, vertical line, and then zero for our zero shift, the null vector. So this is the identity element. Now we need to fulfill the other group postulates to demonstrate that the Euclidean group has the group property. In our proposed group, the group elements are the individual transformations that we have uh, abbreviated with the Zeiss notation. And the group operation is composition. So let's show that if we compose two Euclidean transformations, that the result is also a Euclidean transformation. There are many ways to write this, but maybe most uh, easy to see is that we will have the first transformation be r sub r v sub r. So this is the right most operator and then r sub l v sub l for the left operator. And it will allow us to see what is going on more succinctly and clearly uh, where each of these operators come into the composition. We have the two operators act on the left on a uh, dummy variable x here. So the result of the first operation of this r sub r v sub r is to transform the vector x into x prime, which is now r sub r of x plus v sub r. So basically just using the definition of a Euclidean transformation. In the next step, we're going to take this point x prime and apply the leftmost operator r sub l v sub l to it. So we simply substitute our expression that we have for x prime here after operation of the first operator. And we see that using the definition of the uh, Euclidean transformation, we get r sub l of x prime, which is r sub r x plus v sub r. And then at the end, we add in the vector v sub l. So this is just using the definition of a Euclidean transformation. And now we will have the r sub l operate on this particular expression to see what we get. We just allow the operator r sub l to distribute over this expression so that it gives us r sub l r sub r of x plus r sub l v sub r plus v sub l. And notice that we have an expression that involves some operation on the variable x. So this is r sub l r sub r. And we have some particular vector that is added to it, which is r sub l v sub r plus v sub l. So we can write this in terms of Zeit's notation as follows. 
So in Zeit's notation, this becomes R sub L, R sub R, straight line, R sub L, V sub R plus V sub L. If we multiply two three by three matrices, we know that we get another three by three matrix. So therefore, we end up having uh, an R. So as far as that, the product of two uh, Euclidean transformations is another Euclidean transformation as far as the R part goes. And then if I have R sub L on V sub R, that gives me a vector, which I add to another vector, V sub L, and I get a vector using the fact that V3 is a vector space. So therefore, we've shown that for any two arbitrary Euclidean transformations, their composition is also a Euclidean transformation, showing that we have the closure property for the Euclidean group. Next, we need to prove that each and every Euclidean transformation has an inverse. So if our generic Euclidean transformation is R slash V, then if I multiply it by its inverse, so that I have R slash V minus one times R slash V, the result has to be the identity element in the group, which we have already shown is the identity matrix slash zero. So now we're going to look at uh, specifically determine what the value of r slash v to the minus 1 actually is. We are going to denote the inverse of r slash v with this Euclidean transformation, hypothetically so far, a slash b. So again, using the definition, if this is equal to the inverse of r slash v, then if we multiply this times rv, we should get the identity operation we have already shown what the composition of two Euclidean transformations is. We verify that it is another Euclidean transformation, but we've also determined a formula to show that if we had two Euclidean transformations, we could write down an expression for it. So let's do that right now for the left-hand side of our equation. So we get that the product of a slash b on r slash v is going to be a r slash AV plus B. You've already gotten that from the closure property. Now we're going to use this expression, this equality that we have, and do it in two steps. So we're going to essentially break this into two equations. The first equation is to notice that A times R, these are two operators, multiplied together end up giving us the identity operation. So we have AR equal to I. Since a and R are each three by three matrices, and I is a three by three identity matrix. We essentially have here by definition that A has to be the inverse of R. So that gives us that A is equal to the inverse of R, R to the minus one. Here is the point at which we use the fact that the Rs in our Euclidean transformation are non-singular three by three matrices. To complete our quest for the inverse, now we have the second of our equations. We have that AV plus B must be equal to the null vector zero. So we have that down here, AV plus B equals zero. And we can solve for B by subtracting uh, A times V from each side. First, we have that B is equal to minus A times V, simple algebraic here, but also we can use the result from our first line that A is equal to the inverse of R. So we replace A by the inverse of R. Now we get that B is equal to minus the inverse of R times V. Since we have expressions for both A and B, we now have an expression for the inverse of R slash V. And we have that the inverse of R slash V is r to the minus 1 slash minus r to the minus 1 of v. The final group property we need to verify is associativity. For this purpose, we're going to look at a set of three Euclidean transformations, r1v1, r2v2, and r3v3. For the first part, we're going to evaluate what happens if we do the first composition of transformations, and then do the R3 second, and then we'll compare it to the case where we do R2 and R3 first, and then follow it with 
R1. For the composition of the two terms in parentheses, we end up getting the Euclidean transformation R1, R2, line R1, V2 plus V1, and then we're going to compose it with the final transformation R3, V3 to see what we get. Here we imagine that R1 times R2 is our RL, that R1, V2 plus V1 is our VL, that R sub 3 is our R sub R, and that V3 is V sub R. So that gives that the overall composition is R1 times R2 times R3, which is not too bad. But then the complicated part is that we end up having R1, R2, V3. So that's this operator acting on this vector. And then we have this vector left over, which is R1, V2 plus V1. So this is the result if we have the three operations, but we group the first two first. So now we want to compare the effect if we have grouped together the second two operations first. So now composing R2, V2 with R3, V3, we get R2 times R3, as we imagined. And then we end up with R2 times V3, R2 times V3, plus V2. So that's the result we get if we just leave the first operator, R1, V1, alone, and then we compose the second two. So now, for our comparison, we want to have this operator be composed with this operator and see what the result of that operation is. So we can use our rule for the composition of two Euclidean transformations, where now R sub 1 is the R sub L, and R2, R3 is the R sub R. V sub 1 is V sub L, and then R2, V3 plus V2 is our V sub R. If we do that, we get that the rotations are R1, R2, R3, and then on the other side of the slash, we have, using the R1, operates on R2, V3 plus V2, which gives us R1, R2, V3 plus R1, V2, and then we add in this vector plus V1. And we notice that if we compare this Zeitz uh, operation for the Euclidean group with this, that they're exactly equal. Because they're exactly equal, even though we change the grouping, we change the associativity, therefore this um, set of operations has the property of associativity. Since it has an identity, since it has an inverse, since it has the closure property and it has associativity, therefore we can declare that the set of Euclidean transformations forms a group. I thank you very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.